Does anybody know what a quantitative analyst is? Me neither. It sounds useful, and that's just not really the type of thing that peels my onions, but they do have lots of interesting interview questions. In fact, I found this problem, which I've rewritten slightly, from a book on quantitative finance interviews. Link to that book in the description. Let's take a look at the problem. 100 tigers and one sheep have been brought to the top of Math Mountain. Math Mountain, as we know, is a magical place, covered with vibrant green grass even at its peak. The tigers can eat this wonderful grass, but they'd rather eat that poor sheep. The one sheep can only be eaten by one tiger, so they can't split the sheep. One sheep, one tiger. And if a tiger eats the sheep, that one tiger will then turn into a sheep itself and may now be eaten by a tiger too. All tigers want to survive, and of course they are perfectly rational. The question is, will the sheep be eaten? Let's make sure we're clear that the answer to this question, will the sheep be eaten, is yes or no, and it's in regards to the original sheep. So if a tiger eats the first sheep, then yes, the sheep has been eaten, no matter what happens after that with our new sheep. But the tigers have to consider this carefully, because if a tiger turns into a sheep, it itself might then be eaten, which it does not want. It's a hundred tigers, it's one sheep, it's a big mess, what's gonna happen? The problem's not too difficult, so I invite you to pause the video and try to solve it yourself. Let me know what you figure out down in the comments. We really just need to employ some pretty basic problem-solving strategy here. Let's start with a diagram or picture to help us represent the problem. Here is our one sheep, and here are our 100 tigers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so that didn't turn out to be quite as useful as I thought. Uh, let's go back to the drawing board. I'm thinking we try a different strategy, which is to first consider a smaller problem. Instead of a hundred tigers on Math Mountain with the sheep, why don't we consider the situation where there's just one tiger? In this case, would the sheep be eaten? Certainly, the answer is yes. The tiger would eat the sheep because although he can eat grass, he prefers to eat sheep. He'll then turn into a sheep, but there are no other tigers here on Math Mountain to pose any risk to the new sheep tiger. So perhaps we could start tabulating this. In the case of n equals 1, we have just a single tiger. The answer is yes, the sheep will be eaten. The next case, of course, is two tigers up on Math Mountain with our sheep. What's going to happen in this situation? Well, here things are quite a bit different, because now if either tiger chooses to eat the sheep, well then they're going to turn into a sheep, and then we're back in the n equals 1 case, where the remaining tiger would say, well, heck yeah, I'm going to eat that sheep. And so the tiger that first ate the sheep is now dead. He's been eaten, so he would not want to do that. Now remember, like all tigers, these ones are perfectly rational, which means they're both going to come to that conclusion that eating the sheep is going to result in being consumed. Walking through that logic one more time, let's give these tigers names for convenience. Let's say they're Tony and Romano. So so Romano decides he's going to eat the sheep, right? Just suppose he did that. Then Romano becomes a sheep, and so now Tony knows, now that he's in the one tiger situation, he faces no risk if he decides to eat this sheep. Then he'll turn into a sheep, but then he'll be fine. Tony and Romano both realize that eating this sheep is going to spell disaster, so they're not going to do it. In the case of two tigers, then, the sheep will not be eaten. It's quite easy to see from here how different numbers of tigers are going to affect the fate of our sheep. Whatever the number of tigers is, the next case we might look at would be three tigers. If a tiger decides to eat the sheep, say Giovanni decides he wants to eat this sheep, then we're going to be in the previous situation. In this case, the previous situation is n equals 2, where the sheep wouldn't be eaten. But that means Giovanni, who just ate the sheep and now became a sheep, He's safe, because now he's in the two tiger situation, Tony and Romano know that this is a no-go. You shouldn't eat the sheep in this situation. Again, each time we have an additional tiger, a tiger deciding to eat the sheep brings the tiger into the previous situation, now as the sheep. And so he would only eat the sheep if that previous situation was a no situation, where the sheep is not going to be consumed. So for n equals 3, the answer is yes, the sheep would be eaten. 
eaten. Whichever tiger is first able to perform their logical reasoning, they would eat the sheep, and they would know that now that there are only two tigers, they, as the new sheep, will be safe. So what about the n equals 4 situation? What happens there? Well, if a tiger decides to eat the sheep, he's the sheep, but now he's in the n equals 3 yes situation where the sheep will be consumed. So in the n equals 4 situation, no, the sheep's not going to be consumed because if a tiger ate the sheep, that'd put him into danger, an unsafe scenario. Of course, this pattern continues. For an odd number of tigers, yes, the sheep would be eaten. But for an even number of tigers, no, the sheep will not be eaten. This means that by the time Math Mountain is crowded with 99 tigers, since 99 is odd, that is a dangerous situation for the sheep. The sheep would be eaten. And then if we throw in one additional tiger, Luigi the tiger shows up, now there's 100, it's no longer safe to eat the sheep. So no, the sheep would not be eaten. And this explains why sheep are notorious for their affinity for even numbers. Because if they're surrounded by an even number of perfectly rational apex predators atop a verdant mountain, they're not going to be eaten. And really, isn't that why we all love even numbers? But let me know what you thought about that problem down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.